Ladies and gentlemen, in this talk I want to introduce lung succession imaging, which is actually a direct competitor to dual energy imaging, and we think it's an interesting technique that has a lot of potential. If you look at dual energy for the lungs, uh, it is a technique that displays local iodine concentration and is able to detect and rule out enhancement areas within the lung tissue and therefore also detect local perfusion differences. It allows you to differentiate iodine from calcium and it can be also used for CT angiography. Now, as you all know, it subtracts high energy from low energy data and thus quite a bit of normalization to get rid of beam hardening effects. And what you do is usually do take two simultaneous or interleaved acquisitions, uh, which basically means that there's no image registration necessary and uh, you need a good image separation in terms of energy and that should be as high as possible. And ultimately, because the images are extremely noisy, you need to have good filtering to restore image quality. The advantages are that there are no motion artifacts and it in theory provides information for free if it is implemented in a way that makes it easy to use. Now, as you all know, the iodine numbers or the uh, iodine concentration is directly proportional to the CT numbers and the lower KVP obviously gives you more attenuation per milligram iodine. For example, at 80 KVP, that's about 40 Hounsfield units per milligram per milliliter concentration and at 140, that is about 22 Hounsfield units. If you take an additional Zin filter, this can go down as little as 14 Hounsfield units. Okay, we know now that the president is something and somewhere. So let's uh, continue. <laughs> uh, if you do dual energy, you basically take the difference in this signal. So if you have, uh, let's say, 31 Hounsfield units for 100 kVp and 22 Hounsfield units for 140, uh, it basically gives you a difference of 9 Hounsfield units. So if you have a concentration of 10 milligram per milliliter iodine in an area, 90 Hounsfield unit is roughly what you get as a signal. If you now would subtract a non-enhanced image from the 100 kVp enhanced image, the signal that you get is not 90 Hounsfield units, but 310 Hounsfield units, which basically is higher by a factor of 3.4. If you would like to kind of get that in terms of signal to noise ratio, the same amount with dual energy would have to give 10 times the dose, thanks to this square root function that relates noise and dose. Now, usually what happens is that the dose is not evenly distributed between the high energy and the low energy image, or in the case of subtraction, between the pre-contrast and the post-contrast image. And this shows you the signal-to-noise ratio, and obviously the signal-to-noise ratio is the best if you have the same dose in either of the two images, because the noise in these subtracted images is always dominated by the noise in the noisier images. Um, you actually, <clears throat> this is a dual energy acquisition. You see that the signal to noise ratio remains relatively low. If you compare that to a subtraction image, it is much, much higher. And it basically means that you even can uh, make sure that the pre contrast image has a relatively low dose, let's say uh, 0.2, which means 20% of the dose goes to the low contrast, a uh, pre contrast and 80% goes to the post-contrast, and you still get a signal-to-noise level which is substantially higher than the signal-to-noise level you would expect from dual energy. This actually looks very promising, but still, if you look at the image quality, I'm not sure whether that shows, it's a window setting that's pretty narrow, but you see that there is a substantial amount of noise in both of them. So both of these images require image processing to recover image quality. Now, as you have already heard, uh, subtraction imaging subtracts a pre-contrast scan from a post-contrast scans. You need two acquisitions. And the crucial thing is image registration, because you have to subtract two images, and they have to be as identical as possible. And of course, like with dual energy, you need optimized filtering to regain image quality in these images. But the intrinsic circle noise is much better. And it gives you the opportunity to analyze not only parenchyma, but also vessels. So ultimately, because that's more promising, we started developing 
that together with Toshiba. And uh, one of the obvious applications is pulmonary embolism. Uh, we all know that it sometimes can be difficult to detect small emboli. Uh, thanks to partial volume effects, you're not really sure is this really an embolus or is this just partial volume effect. Uh, sometimes you just easily miss those. This, for example, was an embolus which was not described. Now, if you look at perfusion maps, you see differences in enhancement, and it can help you localize small emboli. And we also know that they have a certain prognostic value. In other words, the more areas are affected, the worse the outcome for the patient, or the bigger the right heart uh, risk for right heart failure. Here you see enhancement, uh, and if you kind of reduce that, you see very clearly that there's an enhancement defect here. Now, it Emboli in the central arteries are easily detected by CTA. Emboli in peripheral arteries are probably more easily detected using those iodine maps. Now, the problem, as I already mentioned, is registration. If you just subtract two images, this is what you get, which is obviously not exactly what you want. Uh, so good registration is crucial, and one way to test it is to do a minimum intensity projection, which will show you misregistered images as black areas uh, around that. As you can see, since the lung tissue moves along the rib and there's a direct movement which is not continuous, this means that you either can register the lungs or the area around it. So here the lungs are registered, you see artifacts here, but very, very little artifacts in the lung. If you then create a MIP, you see excellent quality of the subtracted and enhanced vessels. The issue is, however, that the difference in density are small, so in order to make sure that you can see those differences, you need a color coding. We found that a hot metal scale works best, and basically we remove the vessels before the color coding is applied so that the vessels actually don't disturb the coloring of the lung parenchyma. If you look at dose, the dose is quite acceptable. The median range was 2.5 millisievert. The reason why that was so high is because that was a patient in which we had to do multiple scans because of motion artifacts and wrong timing. In general, uh, the dose is identical to what we used to have in our uh, classic standard CTA. The reason why that is so uh, is because we increased our noise index, so the noise on the pre-contrast scan quite dramatically to an SD value of 30, and on the post-contrast scans to an SD value of 22.5, and that together gives us a very, very competitive uh, total radiation dose to these patients. Registration takes about two minutes. Uh, further evaluation is basically online and the color images can be easily sent and automatically sent to PACS. Now, to compare it again, dual energy uses the difference in iodine enhancement. Iodine signal is therefore sub substantially reduced by the amount of the high KBP signal and the energy separation is crucial. But in subtraction imaging, We've heard that the signal gain is higher, but you need excellent spatial registration. Now, what use is it? Here's an example, a patient with a small emboli here on these MIPS. And if you do the subtraction, you see areas of complete lack of enhancement, others of reduced enhancement, again, areas with complete lack of enhancement. You see a color scale starting at black and ending at white. And it's a scale here, which as a routine starts at zero Hounsfield unit enhancement and goes up to 100 Hounsfield unit. You can window it uh, accordingly if you want. Here's the coronal images. We see streak artifacts from the injection veins, which is very similar to the artifacts we see from, uh, from dual energy, but the contrast to noise ratio is substantial. A classic situation where the image quality of a CTA is maybe not optimum, we actually missed this area here, and if you go back to the perfusion, we see that there's a defect and we actually could kind of identify it later on. The most interesting uh, finding, however, is to see how much of the lung parenchyma is actually cut down by the emboli, how much of the perfusion is cut down. In this particular patient, you see a huge defect of almost a whole, whole right upper lobe and a substantial amount of perfusion defect in the lower lobe, only the middle lobe is reasonable, and a couple of wedge-shaped defects on the other side. You can also see that there is sometimes mismatch between what you see on CTA. Quite a few emboli here, but a substantial amount of <coughs> perfusion defects on the perfusion maps. And on the other hand, sometimes <coughs> huge 
emboli, but only modest amounts of perfusion defects. So you can actually see what an embolus does to the lung, and it does not need, need, uh, necessarily have to match between what you see in the CTA and what happens to the lung. However, there are, of course, a couple of pitfalls. One classic one is emphysema, which will also cause you areas of reduced perfusion. You can see that in this area. Another one is the uh, euler lilly strand reflex, which basically means that if you have a reduced ventilation in the lung, you get also a reduced perfusion, which basically means that if we see a perfusion defect, that does not necessarily mean that there is a, uh, an embolus. That can also be to a malperfusion, and we basically have to go back to our old knowledge about lung scintigraphy to interpret these images uh, correctly. What we also see is that we can use it, for example, for interstitial lung disease. In this particular patient with an ex extrinsic allergic al alveolitis, you can see this area here, which has a complete uh, cut down of the perfusion. It's an area typical with air trapping, where there's actually no enhancement, and you see other areas where there's hyper enhancement uh, in these patients. It could give us chances of looking at areas of disease activity, and I think it's a really interesting research tool to look at. Now, if we summarize, uh, subtraction imaging has intrinsically a much better signal uh, at identical dose. It, however, requires high-tech and high-quality image registration. The workflow, as implemented uh, on the Toshua scanner, is simple. It takes about two minutes for the total processing time and uh, creates these color-coded images, which can be then sent to PACS. If you compare the advantages and disadvantages of the two techniques, then dual energy has basically almost no motion. Dual source scanners do have some motion because they see uh, the same area with a quarter uh, rotation offset, which means that there is some positivity effects there, but others don't have these effects. But usually it's almost no motion. Uh, but subtraction imaging requires motion correction. CNR is substantially higher for subtraction. Uh, dual energy gives you not only iodine maps, but various material decomposition. That's not the case in subtraction imaging. It only gives you iodine maps and real unenhanced images. Uh, you have beam hardening suppression implemented in dual energy, which is not the case in subtraction. And in dual energy, there's usually misclassification of bone on iodine maps because it also gives a high signal, obviously, on these iodine maps and on the subtraction images, they are, of course, completely removed. Uh, virtual monoenergetic images are something that you can create on dual energy. And uh, by using similar techniques, I haven't shown you that here, you can also create a virtual contrast boost using su subtraction images by simply adding the subtractive signal to the post-contrast scan. And you can basically dial in and dial out the amount of contrast you want on these images. And with these last slides, I want to thank you for your attention.